Hi, I'm Katie Farrell. I'm an author, a registered nurse, and a mom and wife to some of the pickiest eaters on the planet. People say that eating healthy is bland and boring, but I'm here to show you a better way with wholesome, simple recipes. All of my dishes are stamped with my family's seal of approval. Think you can't eat those brownies and pasta? Think again. I'm here to share my secrets with all of you. Here's what we're cooking today on Dashing Dish. I'm so excited because today, Sean and I are celebrating our 10th anniversary. I'm surprising him by cooking up his favorites. Chicken Alfredo with a little bit of bacon on top and a delicious espresso chocolate chip ice cream that takes only minutes to prepare. Come join us as we enjoy date night together at home. Today is mine and Sean's 10th wedding anniversary, and instead of going out like we typically do, I'm gonna be making our favorite meal at home, and this is something that we both enjoy together, and it's one of Sean's favorite meals. Sean and I met when we were 16 years old at our high school homecoming dance. The funny part is we actually attended the dance with different people, but we sat next to each other at dinner and we hit it off right away. We spent the rest of the night dancing together and we often joke about how sad it must have been for our poor dates. Shortly after, Sean asked me to be his girlfriend and we were together all through high school and college. Now for the chicken, a lot of times I think people are intimidated even just to grill chicken inside because they think, oh, I don't know if it's raw. How will I know if it's fully cooked? How do I not get it overly dry? Especially when cooking it on a pan. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks that I use at home to make really juicy, flavorful chicken every time. Now, one step is totally optional is to season it ahead of time. And you'll see that I did that here. I just did some paprika, some garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of some herb seasoning mix. Then I just put it on a clean cutting board and then I put some plastic wrap. And honestly, this, this might be the hardest part is just putting the plastic wrap on top of the chicken. And when you do that, it allows you to take your meat pounder and pound it out so it's all really thin and even um, texture, even size all throughout. And that way you can cook it evenly on the pan. You don't have to worry about pink spots and other spots being overly dry. So I'm gonna take my meat pounder, and I love doing this because it, you can take some aggression out in the kitchen too. So you know, if you had a really hard day at work, you can come home and make some chicken. Take it out on the chicken, not your husband. And you just pound that out, just so it looks like it's all even. And it's not gonna be any you know, particular rocket science. You don't need to get out your measuring tools to see. And then once you do that, you simply add it to your pan. So I'm just gonna put these in a griddle pan. Now, you don't need to necessarily have a griddle pan in order to do this. You can use any kind of saute pan and it will work perfectly. But I like using the griddle pan because it kind of gives it that resemblance of grilled chicken outdoors. You could do this outdoors as well, um, but I'm gonna be making all of this inside today. So I just turned my heat up to medium high heat. And you don't wanna just Scorch it. You want to kind of let it cook a little bit um, slower so that it can cook throughout without getting dry and tasteless. So I'm going to let that cook a little bit and meanwhile I am going to also cut up one lemon and the great thing about lemon juice and you can just buy the bottled lemon juice, it doesn't have to be fancy, is you just squirt it on the chicken while it's cooking and that adds a lot of moisture and also flavor back to the chicken so that it doesn't get dried out. So you can do probably anywhere from half to a lemon to the full lemon, depending on what you like. And really, you can't taste it. It's not like it adds a whole lot of lemon flavor, but it does just give it that little bit of brightness of flavor. We also have some chicken stock here that if I see the chicken is kind of browning on the outside quicker than cooking through all the way, I might add a little bit of the chicken stock as the chicken's cooking. But I'm gonna let that cook for just a minute and then we'll get started on the cheese sauce. Now this is one of those things that, just like I said earlier, sometimes you need that punch of flavor of the fat. So I just did center cut bacon and so that's a little bit um, lower fat, leaner cut of bacon. And I just did four slices that I already cut up and I'm gonna add that to the pan. 
I did spray this pan with cooking oil as well. So I'm gonna let this start to cook. The great thing about adding the bacon to the same pan as the cheese sauce is it will really get the, those flavors of the bacon married into the cheese sauce. And I'm gonna look at my chicken, and this just takes about three minutes on each side over medium low heat. And you'll know it's ready to flip when you see that the grill marks are there on the chicken. So I could probably give this another 30 seconds to a minute or so, but I'm gonna flip it just to be safe, just so we don't get dried out chicken. And then we can flip it again if we need to. So let's let that cook for just a moment there. Another thing I, that I love to use when I'm cooking up chicken in a saute pan is a meat thermometer. If you just simply stick the meat thermometer into a piece of chicken, you can test it really easily without it getting dried out and you know it's cooked through. You wanna make sure with poultry that you have um, the temperature be at 165 degrees or greater. So that's the safety mark or measure with that. After six years of dating, Sean proposed to me and I still remember it like it was yesterday. I was on vacation with my family at Disney and we went to Cinderella's castle for dinner. Just as we were being seated, I remember spotting Sean out of the corner of my eye. And as you can imagine, I was in total shock. My first thought was, how did he get here? And then my second thought was, and who dressed him like Prince Charming? Sean got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. And through broken tears, I replied, well, of course. Two years later, on August 8th, he became my husband. And right when we got married, I remember thinking we knew everything there was to know about each other. But we quickly found out that the joining of two lives was quite different than eight years of dating bliss. When we got married, I always say that I had no idea how picky he really was. I remember going over to his house all the time and seeing his mom cook all kinds of different dishes for his family. And his mom was always cooking something separate for Sean. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Sometimes I thought, wow, she's really doing a labor of love here. But I didn't really connect the dots, even though we dated for eight years. And I saw him ordering you know, the same kinds of things at restaurants, but it's not until I lived with him and got married that I was like, oh my gosh, you really do only eat five things. So I always joke and say he's like a picky two-year-old because he had mac and cheese, uh, pasta dishes, chicken nuggets, hot dogs, and uh, just about anything that you could think a two-year-old would eat, that was about what Sean ate. And so I thought, okay, what did your mom do to you? Now I have to fix this. Um, but the great thing is, is that it took time and patience, but over the years, one of the things that I found to be the best way to kind of change his eating habits is not necessarily say, okay, we're gonna totally change your, your diet altogether. We're gonna start giving you broccoli on a plate with hummus. Instead, I just said, okay, what are some of your favorite meals that we can make you that you love, but just make healthier swap out? And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm taking a pasta dish and I'm making it healthier. I'm taking a cheese sauce and I'm making it better for you. So while this bacon is cooking up, I'm gonna check on my chicken real quick. And that looks beautiful. That's what you wanna see are those grill marks right there. And that chicken will be done in about a minute or two. So if you didn't pre-season your chicken, this is where you'll want to season it. You'll want to take some garlic powder, some salt, some pepper, just really a sprinkling, um, really according to your taste, but don't go too heavy handed. I always say with any kind of seasonings or spices, you want to start small because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So you want to just start with just a sprinkling of salt, pepper, maybe some garlic powder if you like that and then add more as you go. So this bacon is looking good, it's crisping up nice. Let me turn my heat down just a little bit here. And that chicken should be done, we'll give it a, we'll test the temperature, but we'll just turn off the heat here because I'm gonna assume that it's done and then we'll check the temperature in just a moment. But we're gonna finish up this bacon first. And you'll know the bacon's done when it's to your liking. Because really, I mean, everybody has a different opinion about bacon, especially my husband, Sean. That was another thing that surprised me when we got married is I thought, who likes soggy bacon? But he does. He, he does not like bacon crispy at all. So to each their own. So I'm gonna leave this bacon a little bit underdone, uh, according to my opinion, so that Sean can enjoy it as well. 
So we're gonna stop there with the bacon. And then to this, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of garlic. Now you could add more. This is kind of the fun of cooking is it really is an eyeball thing. You can add more or less according to your personal taste and flavors. So I added the garlic to the pan with the bacon and then I'm gonna add some oat flour. And this is what makes this cheese sauce a little bit different is I don't add butter, I don't add you know gobs of white flour or cheese. I'm just adding oat flour and some other ingredients that really have bold flavors to make it a nice creamy cheese sauce without over adding a lot of cheese. So I'm gonna add a fourth cup of oat flour to the pan. And I'm just gonna stir this in. And this is really the beginning of a roux here that we're forming. Now a roux is just a fancy French term for a cheese sauce. And the great thing about this is like I said, you don't even have to add butter. So we have oat flour going here and that replaces the white flour. And then we are gonna add two cups of milk. Now I use almond milk in this recipe, but you can use any kind of milk that you like. So we have that going. And then I'm just gonna continue to stir up this cheese sauce I'll check the temperature of the chicken and I'll finish this dish up and whip up a yummy treat right after this. There are so many nutritious options available at the grocery store for pasta these days. Some of my favorites include brown rice, quinoa, and bean-based pastas. They are much higher in fiber, protein, and whole nutrition than white flour pastas and they can be just as tasty. I also like to use spaghetti squash and spiralized zucchini in many of my dishes. So today is mine and Sean's 10th wedding anniversary and I'm making him a romantic meal at home and I'm making his favorite, which is chicken Alfredo with a healthy spin, of course. So I'm just finishing up the cheese sauce here. I uh, just added some oat flour, some bacon, some garlic, and some almond milk to the pan. And I just have it cooking over medium low heat until it thickens up. It really only takes about a minute or two. So you just kind of want to watch it really closely and stir it as it thickens. And you can see it'll coat the back of a spoon nicely there. And then once it gets to that point, you want to add your cheese. Now there is some cheese to this, don't be afraid of cheese, but I just cut the amount of cheese back on this recipe. And I did 3 fourths cup of mozzarella, but I also like to use Swiss cheese, any kind of cheese that you like really will work in this cheese sauce. And then I have Parmesan cheese. And what I love about using Parmesan cheese, and I use it often in my recipes, is the fact that it has a lot of flavor for not a lot of calories. So it really gives that powerful flavor punch without adding a whole um, you know, cup of shredded cheese. So really I just did about 3 fourths cup of Parmesan cheese. The great thing about cooking is you can always modify, alter a little bit here and there. It won't make or break the whole recipe. Now once you stir in the cheese, you will see that it thickens a lot. So this is why we have some extra almond milk on hand. Kind of thin out the sauce until it's perfect to your liking. So I'm gonna add some more almond milk and the heat is just over um, low heat right now, which is important for any kind of cheese sauce. You don't want it to be too high or else you'll get the cheese will kind of curdle up. Sometimes you hear it called um, the cheese sauce breaks. And so that's what you wanna look for here is you wanna just be really careful watching over low heat just to make sure the cheese stays nice and creamy like it should. And I'm gonna add our cooked pasta and I just cooked this according to the package directions. Nothing fancy or magical about that. I just put it on uh, in a pot, boiled it up, and then drained it. And I'm just gonna add about three-fourths of the pasta, see if that looks good. Sean likes his pasta extra cheesy, so I'm not gonna add all the pasta just yet and make sure that we have enough sauce. And that looks perfect. Added about three-fourths of the pasta. So. All you have to do is add your pasta to the pan. I don't like to dirty a bunch of dishes, a bunch of bowls, so I just do it all in one big pan so that I could add my pasta. 
And again, Sean likes his bacon a little bit underdone. So I would have done, personally, if this were up to you know me, I would have done a bacon that was really crispy and put it on top. So that's just personal preference. You could take the bacon right out of the pan before even adding it to the cheese sauce so it's nice and crispy and sprinkle it on top. So now I'm gonna show you what I like to do for my pasta dish. Now I would definitely have this brown rice pasta alongside Sean, especially for a special occasion. But I love veggies so much that I just swap them out all together wherever I can. So I'm gonna show you what I do for my pasta dish. I have a spaghetti squash here. Now, you may have seen these in the grocery store and maybe you haven't even approached it because it looks a little intimidating, but I'm telling you this is so easy to make. All I do is I just take a knife and you just wanna make sure it's a little bit sharp on the end. Give it a quick prick so that the steam can come out and put it in the microwave for about five minutes. Just let it soften a little bit and then cut it all the way through horizontally. Now, if you like to roast your spaghetti squash, you can finish roasting it up in the oven, but I highly recommend putting it in the microwave first so that you can get it nice and soft so you can cut it. Then once you cut it in half, you just roast it the rest of the way in the oven or you can just finish microwaving it right in the microwave for about five more minutes. And you'll just see there's some seeds here. All you have to do is just discard them. You can either throw them in the trash or you can honestly roast them up just like you would pumpkin seeds and eat them. But I just throw them away. You take some kind of spoon. You could also just use your fork, but this is easier. And you just pull them out just like that. Set them off to the side. Then you'll see it's just like spaghetti because it's like noodles there. So this one I just microwaved for 10 minutes total. And so it's a little bit on the softer side. So roasting, all that does when you roast a spaghetti squash is it kind of gives it that roasted flavor. So sometimes that's preferred. It's all up to your personal taste. And I like microwaving things because it's quick and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get the strands loose just like this. And then I will put mine into my bowl with some of this cheese sauce and just kind of take a little bit with a ladle and pour it on top of my spaghetti squash. You can see the chicken here is already finished, so I'll top our dishes with some chicken and then some parsley. Maybe a little bit of extra Parmesan because you can't go wrong there. Marriage is a gift from God and it can be so incredible to share your life with someone, but it isn't always easy. It's the merging of two personalities, two opinions, and two separate lives, which means that conflict is bound to happen. We also have to remember that we have an enemy that is fighting against marriage because it was designed by God to bring him glory. The good news is God has given us everything we need to defeat the devil through prayer and the word of God. We can also have hope knowing that God is fighting for us and he is on our side. When we lay down our rights and our desires and we remember that marriage is ultimately a ministry, we can find joy in serving one another and reflect his love to the world around us. For dessert, we're making one of my husband's favorite, well, I have to admit, it's mine too, coffee ice cream. We both love coffee, and a funny story about that, he actually used to hate coffee until our daughter Maddie was born, and when she was a newborn, suddenly we were both so exhausted, he said, okay, whatever this coffee magic is, I need in on it. So I made him a few cups of coffee, and the rest is history. So we combined our two loves, coffee and ice cream, for our favorite dessert. And it's really easy to make. It's literally three ingredients, and um, just very simple ingredients to find as well. Now I have some uh, granulated coffee coffee, instant coffee here. I'm doing one tablespoon in a bowl, but you can also use your morning coffee if it's chilled or room temperature. You just don't want to add hot coffee because that will definitely mess this recipe up. Then I have a half cup of almond milk that I'm going to add to this and a fourth cup of stevia. Now for this recipe, I use stevia, but you can use any kind of sweetener that you like. You could use coconut sugar. You could use monk fruit sweetener is a great one honey, agave, maple syrup, any kind of sweetener you like. I just don't recommend white sugar and white flour in any of my recipes. So I did a fourth cup of stevia, but you could add as much or as little, um, depending on your desired taste. So I'm gonna whisk this together. And why you did the milk there is you can see how the coffee granules just um, kind of melted into that milk. 
just gonna whisk that together. Then I'm gonna add my True Whip, which is a healthier alternative to our beloved Cool Whip that we all know and love from childhood. I think that if you were born anytime in the 80s, 90s, maybe even, who knows? I mean, it could be years before that. <laughs> but I was born in the 80s, so that's how I know about Cool Whip. Um, cool Whip was like the thing. You did, you added Cool Whip in every single dessert. So I'm just kind of stirring gently, I'm folding. You don't wanna break it down just like whipped cream, just like um, egg whites when you beat them. You wanna keep the air in there, so I'm just kind of gently folding and stirring in that coffee mixture. And you can see how delicious this looks. If you like coffee and you like ice cream, this is a must make. And you can see how quick it was too. Um, so the only part you have to wait on here is the freeze time. Just like anything that's worth the wait, it's definitely worth it. Um, you definitely wanna put it in the freezer for I'd say at least about four to six hours until it hardens up. But you could also do it overnight and that way you don't have to wait. Um, so I'm gonna add some chocolate chips to this because what's coffee ice cream without chocolate, right? So this I'm not gonna measure out because really you don't have to measure chocolate chips. But you can find dark chocolate chips, you can find stevia sweetened chocolate chips, um, whatever kind of chocolate chips work for you and your family. But I personally love stevia sweetened chocolate chips and Sean likes them too. So that's what I'm using here. And I'm just gonna pour in probably Let's do a few more tablespoons. It is our anniversary. Probably about a fourth cup of chocolate chips. And then I'm going to spread it into a pan. Now you could use a bowl for this as well or even a Tupperware, but I'm gonna make it in a pan so it looks a little bit fancier for our anniversary dessert. Then, like I said, all you wanna do is you wanna cover this, put it in the freezer four to six hours or overnight until it's frozen. You can even top it with a few extra chips if you'd like. And Sean and I, one of our favorite things to do for our date nights is get ice cream out. So instead we're having ice cream at home and it'll be the perfect way to end our celebration together. All right, Sean should be done golfing soon so I need to finish this up before he gets home. Sean and I don't let a day go by without praying together, and we hold our personal walk with God of high priority. It can be a challenge, especially in the busy seasons of life, but everything that is valuable requires effort, and it is always worth the investment. Well, I hope you worked up an appetite because in addition, to your favorite chicken alfredo, I made espresso chip ice cream. Oh, that looks so good. And since it's our anniversary and we love ice cream, I thought let's be crazy and just have dessert first. Oh, that sounds what good to me. Think? Yeah, let's do it. Wow. We sure have had a lot of ice cream dates over the last 10 years, haven't we? Oh, we've had so many. <laughs> Can you believe it's been 10 years? I cannot. It's amazing to think back that it's been 10 years. I still remember like it was yesterday when you walked into Cinderella's castle, dressed like Prince Charming, and I thought, how are you in Florida right now? That was right. my first thought. And then I was like, who dressed you like Prince Charming? That was a crazy day trying to get there with, you know, no time at all to spare. We've had so many good times, so many memories. Yeah. What do you think your favorite memory is out of the last 10 years? Well, obviously having Madeline was, was one of the best moments of my life. And uh, I think our Hawaii trip and yeah. a couple other God's uh, vacations. God's been so faithful, hasn't he? So faithful. Well, happy anniversary, sweetie. Thanks. I love you. Happy anniversary.